Hello everybody! In this video we will see the part 2 of how to create a dynamic form. Specifically, we will see how to provide select menu options in a dynamic field, how to provide a default value and last but not least how to provide validators. So let's get started. In the previous episode we created this form which is dynamically generated. Let's see the code for a quick reference. For a detailed reference, please do check the part 1. To generate the form we just saw, we have in the app component HTML these lines of code, where we iterate in a dynamic form fields array and we generate dynamic form field components. First, Let's have a look on the dynamic form fields. So if I follow this one, we see that we have the details for a select menu, the details of a text item, and the details of another text item. And then we have this generation in order to generate every object item into a form control in a form group. So now, what we are going to do is to provide some options. Let's see the dynamic form field component. And as we can see, what we have here is value 1, value 2 and value 3. Let's go to the browser. And we see that we have 1, 2 and 3. The predefined items. But of course, having a dynamic form field, we need to have dynamic select menu options as well. To do so, we will update our model and we will create one more property in the interface and I will name it like select menu options. And the type will be a key value pair. The key of type string and the value of, of type string. This will be optional. And now let's go to the app component and we need to provide the menu items when we provide a select type. Select menu options and this will be let's say item 1 and the value I want to have it like item 1, item 2 and the value to be item 2 and also the other one to be item 3. Now we can use these menu options in the dynamic form field and instead of having these predefined items we can just have an iteration. How to do this? I will have an ng4 let menu option of form item select menu options and do you remember this is a key value pair in order to use the key and the value in the template we need to have the key value pipe the default one from angular now we will replace this default value the number one which was the previous value and we have to replace it and i will have in an interpolation the menu option dot value and this value is a result of the key value pipe. And we need also to have to replace the value one with the ng value directive. And we will assign, we will provide the value, which one, the menu option dot key. Let's delete these. We don't need them. And also let's make the code more readable. Let's go to the browser and see what we have. If I open this, we can see that we have item 1, item 2 and item 3. If I click item 2, we can see that the binding works just fine. And the same goes for item 3, item 1 or nothing. Nice. Now let's see how to provide a default value. How about, for example, let's have a use case in mind. How about 
if I want to have my form fields pre-filled. For example, I want to have here profanis and here to have profanis too, or something like this, default values. And also to have a selected menu item. To do so, again, we have to update our interface. I will name this property like value of type string and this will be an optional one. Let's close this and let's go to the app component where we generate the items and I want the value for this one, for the select menu item to be item 2. We will select the key, we won't select the value and also this one, I'm going to have it like profanis and this to be profanis too. Now we have to use this value. How to do this? We need to provide this value in the form control that we generate. Where do we generate the form control? Here. So let's refactor this code. I will take this from here, I will create the form control variable and I will assign this form control in the second argument of add control. And now this null corresponds to the default value, but now that we have a value, it's easy to go like form item dot value. Let's go to the browser. And what we can see is that we have here profanis, profanis2, and also here we have the selected item, which is item2. Nice. So that was the second part. And the third part is how to provide validators. There are two different options. Let's see both. The first one is to create our own API, let's say. Let's go again in the, into the dynamic form field model and we can have something like the field is required, a boolean one. Having this property, now again we have to go to the component where we generate our array of, of fields and be like, I want this to be a required one. It's required to true. Having this, we can now try to convert this boolean value is required to a validator and inject this validator in the second argument of the form control. How can we do this? We can be like the form item. If it is required, then I want to provide here the validators dot required. Otherwise, I won't provide null. And to make sure that this works fine, let's go to the app component HTML and instead of having only the value, I will have also one more interpolation and this is going to be my form.valid. Let's go to the browser. And we can see that the form is valid. It says that it's true. And the reason is that this field is required but we have a value. How about if I delete this value? We can see that the form now is not valid. So we manage to provide a validator. But we can say that this way is a sort of limited and we have to generate our own API. How about if we use the validators, the built-in validators that Angular has? How to do this? Let's go to the component ES and let's see what is the type of the second argument of the control. So I will follow this and we can see that this is a validator FN or a validator FN array. So we need to use this, the validator FN. I will delete the is required and I will create another property and this will be the validators and the type will be a validator of an array. And I will have this optional as well. So now we can go to the app component 
let me close this and instead of having this required we can now be like I want to have the validators to be like an array and I will provide the validators dot required and then we have to provide these validators in the second argument of the form control I will delete everything and I will just use the validators nice let's go to the browser and we can see now that the form is valid is true and if I delete this the form now is false is not valid reusing the built-in validators of Angular offers more flexibility since we can combine more than one and we do not have to revisit our interface, our API again and again. This means that here I can have like validators email. This field I want to be valid if it has a value and this value follows a pattern email. Let's change also the label here and be like email. And I will delete the value. Now the form is false, it's not valid. And if I type anything here, the form is still invalid. But what about if I follow the email pattern? Now we have a valid form. Nice. So this is how we provide validators in the fields and this is actually it what we saw in this video is how to provide options how to, provi to provide a default value and also how to provide validators thanks for watching